all right guys so you're welcome back once again to this section so in today's lecture i'm gonna take a new topic all together and that is on introducing to statistics introduction to statistics as a new course that we are introducing on this channel so please make sure to like this video share with others to inform them that we are live so that they can also join in that case so you're welcome back once again you're welcome back once again so please make sure to like this video as well so that we all engage on in that case all right so let's begin the course for today's discussion introduction to business statistics so please share this video so that others can join us and make sure to like this video as well so that we get more engaged as so as we move along all right so this is our course outline for this course actually this is our course outline for this course so we're we'll looking at introduction to statistics then we talk about classifications of data talk about measures of location and measures of variation normal distribution probability concepts correlation regression and even look at other issues as we move along in that case so actually this slide is a slide from Kenya school of business from a lecturer in Kenya school of business that i'm using so it's not a slide that actually is coming from me so let's take note of that so let's move on so we are today we are starting with the introduction to statistics actually so bef before we start we need to have a background knowledge about how statistics as a concept emerges and then how it has been assisting people in making decisions so before even we look at the history of statistics what is statistics so statistics as a concept as a mathematics concept or as an academic discipline actually there is a need for students there is a need for business people there's a need for trainers to study statistics why do do people need to study statistics why because it has been researched on that on daily basis people or business people or individuals are making decisions based on what the use of data based on the use of data and before you can make decisions based on use of data you need to understand how data are used for making decisions you can't just make decisions without the use of course on average you can clearly see that people make decisions on the use of what data people make decisions on the use of what data even before you step in to join this live section remember when you wake up today you were having plans for your activities you said that on this time i will do this at this particular time i will do this at this particular time i will join this lecture so that you move on so you realize that at that point you're using data you're using time time as a data to make these those decisions and that is the need why we need to study the statistics because people on daily basis are making decisions based on the use of data and you to know how data are used to make what decisions so that's why there is a need for us to study statistics and as well as we have data all over around our lives and all over everywhere that we live so that's why there is a need for us to what, study statistics as a key concept so for us and academic disability so for us our lives and so far as our business are concerned so we are looking at the history of so how the statistics as a, a concept emerges so actually statistics as a concept emerges from these two dimensions you have two parts upon which you can trace statistics from we can trace statistics from these two dimensions we have one where we trace it from the official statistics i mean development from what official I mean, government where the government used statistics for the activities and as well we can also trace it from the development of what as an academic as a discipline as a discipline in academics that we use in mostly in our education sectors mostly universities and other education sectors that we have in our environment that we are living is that okay so actually these are the two forms upon we can trace statistics to we can trace it from the official statistics that our government used statistics for its activities and also development of statistics as an academic or discipline in universities and other educational institutions so with the that of official statistics government use government were using statistics or still continue to use statistics or in ancient 
days, people use statistics most of the times for what? On counting base, where we wanted to determine the total population that we have in a particular what, town or a particular what, country. They wanted to know the number. So that by that way, they engage in what we call census, population census. That's where people were using what? Statistics. So that was another form upon which statistics was what, developed. People were using, actually, this as a means of what counting of our population that we're having for that particular what uh country or for that town so you can can trace it that countries or civil countries like egypt babylonia rome and these people were actually using these uh statistics tools as a means of what counting and that's how can we can trace it from as official what uh, government i mean statistics in the way of what counting and then the reason why they were doing all these things is to first to identify the taxes that need to be paid by what individual citizens within this civilized world society the tax factor was one of the key things that they were using what this or as a means that we can trace statistics as a discipline from this part of our discussion is that okay and then also they're also using this as a means of what identifying their manpower or particular what the total population that exists for a particular what country is that okay and also to know the strength of their material worth is that okay so this were another reason why they were using what statistics or they were employing statistics in their relation as a concept that we also able to what, develop statistics from too so most most of these things were used by government officials and these politicians and this uh, so that's where we can trace statistics as one part from where government officials were using for what public counting and other stuff, census, I mean, uh, population census for counting of the people and then others in that case. And from the academic discipline to, we can talk about where we employed, like people like Pascal, I mean, these are people who have been, have been, I mean, developing, when it comes to statistics, they have been champions in statistics. We have Pascal and we have what Benoli. I think we'll move on as we move along. We get to know the names I'm talking about. So these are things that statistics as a discipline has been emerged from, from official statistics and then also from on academic perspectives that it has been continually evolving as we also we are learning right now. So these are the things that statistics as a discipline emerges from. So one from the official official statistics that's where government uses for its official purpose or for counting that population census and also as academic discipline where people like pascal and Benoli in 17 centuries use it i mean they have been these people have been involved in statistics for a quite long they have been developed this concept as academic discipline for quite long that's where we are also also learning it as a concept in that case so i mean we will explore it more as we move along with statistics as we move along with what statistics. So as I said earlier on, people making decisions on daily basis, people are making decisions or business people are making decisions based on the use of data. And this decision that they made, they need to understand how these data are actually being collected and how they need to be used in order to make effective decisions. That's why there needs, there's a need for us to study and understand statistics in that case. So let's take note of that. So that is just a brief history about what statistics actually. So per today's session, we talk about, I think we have talked about the history of statistics as a brief, but then we will also continue to look at the modern definition of statistics. Then also talk about the need for us to study stuff. Why is there need for us to study statistics? The types of statistics. We also talk about statistical terms that we need to know, and then talk about variables and even levels of measurement i think that one we're going to look at that one probably tomorrow because i don't think we can cover it today so i think we'll look at some of them and then continue probably tomorrow in that case so i think the issue of, as i said earlier on we said the one statistics relate to official statistics where that's one part we can trace it from where government were using as official statistics for population census for counting of what people for counting of what people within that particular what, country. So in that, we can also have one of a German professor who called, was called Gottfried Akinwa. He also used statistics in 1770. He also used statistics in 1770. And he 
for him, he defines statistics. Is how he defines that he defines as the science that teaches us what is political arrangement of the modern state of what the new world. That is how Professor Gottfried Akin will define what statistics. He said that it is science that teaches us what is political arrangement of all the modern state of what the new world. Actually, from the ancient days, these statistics were using for it was more centered on what politicians. Once you hear of statistics, you are talking about politicians. You are talking about what the people, you are talking about the governance, and then you're talking about what the state. That was how the idea about statistics, I mean, evolved. When we use statistics as an uh, official, as an official, as you can trace it from official perspective, or official statistics, it's more, it was more centered on what governance, the people, and then the country as a whole. So that is one thing about statistics that we need to what no and then as an academic discipline too we can also trace from the works of pascal as i said and ben Nolly in 17th what, century they have also been championed in the concept or as a discipline what as a discipline as a uh, statistics as a discipline that has been championed a lot in these areas that we are also going to study along and know their contribution towards their statistics. And also, once you also study that, we can also know what we can also bring on board. So for us, this is plain, because it keep on emerging as and when we study it. People are also bringing new ideas. So for us, statistics as a discipline is what concerned to also to add to their take to the concept about what statistics. So that is was just that is just a brief history about the statistics. So one thing we, we need to know here is that when it comes to statistics, you can trace it from two parts from the related to official status was used by government for population census and then also as an academic discipline that we can choose from the work of Pascal and what Ben only in 17th what, century in that case. So let's move on to the definition of what statistics. So actually definition of statistics can be traced or can be defined from what two perspectives. We have the plural sense of defining statistics and also have what a singular sense of what defining statistics. When it comes to the plural sense of defining statistics, this is how statistics is defined. It is, is a term, it is used to indicate what? A group of numbers or collection of what? Numerical what? Data. That is how we define statistics in plural sense. That the term statistics is used to indicate a group of numbers or collection of what? Numerical what? Data. Collection of numerical what? Data. So you have also heard of a new where the collection of what numerical data when they come in, when we as, as we move along you get to know when it comes to statistics it's uh, undergo certain what processes it's undergo certain processes and collection of data is one of the key processes that we and i when it comes to what statistics of what i mean data so here we say when it comes to group of when it comes to statistics in plural sense it is a term that is used to indicate a group of numbers or collection of what numerical data i hope you won't forget this so when you're asked to define statistics in plural sense, it is a group of numbers or collection of what data in numerical what form. So that is the plural sense of defining statistics. Then when it comes to a singular sense, this is where it involves the process of statistics. That is a science that studies, it is a science that studies the methods and procedures. It is a science that studies the methods and procedures. That studies the methods and procedures for collecting, for collecting. So you have what collecting for collecting. Let me have something here. So for collecting, for collecting, organizing, presenting, analyzing, interpretation of. So let me break it down for you so that you get to understand the whole deal about statistics. We are saying that is the science that studies methods and what procedures for collecting. So before even we can make decision about a particular what problem. You first of all need to get data about that particular problem. So before you can get that data, that is where you collect what data. That is where you collect data. So the method of collecting the data is re very relevant or very important when it comes to what decision making because it is the collection stage that we can make an effective conclusion at the end. Because if you don't collect a representative data, or you don't collect a proper data, at the end of the day, our decision that you're going to make going to be what going to be a wrong word decision. Because your input will define your output. 
So how you collect data is also fundamental. So for us, decisions, problem are out, or solving of what problems as making decisions are concerned. So we are saying that it is a, it's a sign that studies the method and procedure for collecting, organizing. So once you collect the data, whatever tool that you use to collect the data, that is fine. So once you collect the data, you organize. How do you organize data? That is where you group the data, whether you group in, in the form of what a table or you. So when it comes to the organization, we have a group form, we have a group form, we have a categorical. That is how we organize our data. Either you group it or you ungroup it or you categorize it. So when it comes to the category, I think as we move along, because these are the functions of our statistics, as we move along, you get to understand what I'm trying to put across. When it comes to the organization, we have three forms of organizing, whether it can be in a group form or group form or categorical form. Is that okay? And then once you, once you have collected, once you have organized, you present the data. How do you present the data? This way you present the data in a form of what? Diagrams in a form of what graphs or in a form of all pictorial forms that's where you have what that's where pie chart histogram and those bar charts and those issue comes in that's where the presentation comes in so in a presentation of data that's where you present them in a the form of diagrams in the form of what charts in the form of what graphs is that okay that's where the presentation comes so after collecting and organizing the whether you group it or ungroup it or categorize it the next thing is to present it in the form of graphs, in a form of what? Diagrams, in a form of what? Chart. That's where you bring in your pie chart, your histogram, your bar chart, and other cumulatives, those, those kind of diagrams. I hope you are getting the links. So that is how we present data. So after presenting the data, the next thing you need to want to what? Analyze the data. How do you analyze data? After presenting the data, that's where you come out with some level of calculation. That's where you do some form of calculation, like let's say you want to calculate the mode, you want to calculate the mean, you want to calculate, let's say, the standard deviation, you want to calculate, let's say, the percentile of that particular data. So it is the analysis, it is out of the calculation that you can make what analysis. Or let's say you have calculated the standard deviation of a particular what data. Calculate the standard deviation of a particular data. Then you tell you ask you ask yourself. This value you're getting for, let's say, standard deviation of particular data, what is the meaning? You, you are, so in that process, you're analyzing what the data. So after analysis of the data, that is where the next thing you want to do is what interpret the numerical word data. Because it's analysis that you're going to fetch you the number for interpretation. So interpretation here, you assign meaning to the analysis that you have made. So with the standard deviation that you got, what is the meaning? What is the interpretation behind that number that you have gotten? And how can it help to solve that problem that you are you are trying to solve? So it is out of the analysis that you can interpret, you can assign meanings to these what numbers so that you can use to make what effective what or more effective. decision and for what other useful person. So that's organizing, presenting and analysis of what and analysis and interpretation of numerical data to assist in making more effective decision and for other useful what purposes. So that is the plural sense for what the definition of what statistics. I don't think you forget this. So that is the whole idea. You see that statistics is also about what solving what decision or it's about solving problem by making decisions to solve that that problem. So in general, it is a science that studies the methods and procedures for collecting, organizing, presenting, analyzing, and interpretation of numerical data to assist in making more effective decision and for other useful words purposes. So that is the idea about what statistics in a singular word sense. And based on how I've explained the concept, I don't think you forget this. When you say collection of data, the tools that you use to collect is fundamental. You say here, yeah, the tools that you use to collect is fundamental here. When it comes to organizing, that's where you present them in a the form of group or grouped or in the categorical form. When it comes to present, that's where you put them in the form of diagrams, charts, in the form of and other forms. Okay. And then it comes to analysis, that's where you try to do some kind of calculations 
let's say you want to calculate the mode, don't calculate the mean, standard deviation, and those kind of stuff. So after the analysis, that's where you can assign meaning. That's where you do interpretation of what is numerical data to assist in making what more effective decision and then other useful what purposes. So that is the idea when it comes to what the singular form of defining what statistics. So let's take note of that. If you have any question, you can drop it in the comment section and I'll be ready to respond to it in that case. So let's move on. All right, I'm coming. So now, once you have gotten the definition of what statistics in a singular form, and then you said in a singular form, it is the collection and what of numerical what data, right? We said, let, let's come back to this. We said is what it is used to indicate a group of numbers or collection of what numerical data. That's what we said about the, uh, the plural form of statistics is they indicate the group of numbers or collection of numerical data. And we have said the singular form, it is the science and procedure that studies the collection of data after collecting, you organize it. After organize, you present the data. Once you present it, you put in the form of what? Analysis, and then you interpret the data to help you as a decision maker to make effective decision and for other useful what purposes. So having gotten that definition, you're able to come up with what? The main highlights or the main functions of what a statistic. So, and a statistics, these are the functions that we need to know. We there is what whatever we are collecting is, has to do with what numerical what data. Majority of what we are going to do is going to be in the form of what numerical what data. And then, once you are able to identify the numerical data you want to collect, you come to the collection stage. Then you move on to organization, and then so organization and classification are one thing that you do at a particular stage, presenting of the data, analysis of the data, interpretation of the data. I think I've explained all this when we were into the concept of the statistics definition, where we were talking about the plural sense. So we can straight away move on to the next thing. So why why study statistics? Let me put this question before you. Let me see in the comment section. Why study statistics? Why study statistics? Let me see in the comment section. Why do you want to study statistics? Based on what we have, says so for why do you want to study statistics why do you want to study that let me see in the comment section if you have an answer to this let me see in the comments so please make sure to share this video like as well you already subscribe subscribe to the channel so that we can get more engaged please like and share this video please and please share this video is very important so that you share to also to help others also to learn on this channel as well in that case so why is there a need for us to study statistics i want to see in the comment section of this video. So why there, is there a need for us to study statistics? Okay, I see some one coming in here. Roda is saying that to collect data. Okay, that is one key thing to collect data. Okay, that is nice. Any other? Why is there a need for us to study data? So actually, there are a number of reasons why we need to study the data. If you can, you could remember when I begin the concept about statistics, I said earlier on that there is a need for us to study. Why is there a need for us to study statistics? And I even made it clear that the reason why we need to study statistics is about what making decision, and then we make decision based on the use of what data. Is that okay? So why there is a need for us to study statistics, or why studying statistics? It's one one of the key important here is that one data is everywhere because you make decisions based on data and data is everywhere and irrespective of your line of business or your line of work you're going to engage in future you will make decisions based on the use of what data it is true because irrespective of your line of work that you're going to do in future or you are doing irrespective of it you make decisions that involves the use of what data and it is, it, and it can be said that in our daily lives, we are making decisions based on what the use of data. Even when you wake up, I mean, you plan that at this time you, you do this, at that time you do that. Remember, the time factor here is a data. And we are making decisions of doing this, doing that based on the time factor. And this time is what a data. So the reason why I want to study data here is that one, data is what everywhere. That is one key thing that. I, you would like to study statistics because data is what everywhere data is what 
everywhere. And then two, the next thing you want to study this year is that we make decisions based on the use of what? Data. And so therefore, we need to understand how data are used to make what? Decision. We need to understand how data are used for making what? Decision. That's why you want to what? study what? Statistics. Because we make decisions based on the use of what? Data. We make decisions based on the use of what? Data. I believe that is clear. So that's also another important thing that you want to study what? Statistics. Because we make decisions based on the use of what? Data. And then we can also talk about we also need to have knowledge about how these data are made because you can't make decisions without having what a well thought knowledge about what the data you're using to make what decision and these are things that we need to understand so far as data or so far as statistics and is useful in making decisions now what is uh, purpose for making decisions now what are concerned so these are a number of things that we can talk about when it comes to the use of what data in making decisions and so far as statistics is what concerned so these are a number of them that we can talk about for the purpose of decision making in processes these are a number of them that we can talk about to determine whether existing information is adequate or additional information is required so that is one key thing that you want to i mean understand so far as decision or data is what why you want to study i mean you want to study statistics want to adequate to determine whether the existing information is adequate or additional information is what required so you want to make a decision to solve a problem. The information that you have as at that particular time, is it adequate for you to help you make that decision or you need other information to add up so that you can make effective decision. So that's one thing that you need to what you need to know so that you can. Uh, that's why the reason why you need to study statistics. Sorry, that's the reason why you need to what study statistics. That's one key thing. Two, to gather additional information if it is needed in such a way that it does not provide misleading what resource. So as I've already explained in point one, you can clearly see that it has a relation in point two. So if the existing data you, you have, if it is not what enough, then there is a need for you to uh, gather additional information so that you don't make any misleading what, or you don't provide any misleading results at the end of the day. Then three, also to summarize information in a useful and informative what manner. I think all these things are work captured in the definition of what statistics in a singular form if, if you can actually relate it all these things were captured in it so that is another thing so you want to summarize data in a, in, in a, a useful and informative manner summarization can also have to do with the presentation of data in a summary form in the form of diagrams in the form of what chart in the form of what i mean pictorial forms so that it can even make an i mean informative for it can give useful and informative what i mean yes that's what i'm trying to put across so can help you to make even effective decision once you have a useful and informative thought manner in the form of a summarized what data you can be able to make useful decisions in that case then also to analyze and available information as i said all these things were captured in the definition of data and then also to draw conclusions and make inference while assessing the risk of incorrect so these are a number of reasons why you want to study data okay i think i i see one comment here and we're saying that plan for the future okay that is also good because as we have discussed we use data to make plans based on the number of data I mean, we are using the type of data you are using as i said earlier on that even before you wake up today we are planning you're using time as a means of planning your daily activity and then remember the time here becomes what the data so plan for the future is also another important thing that's good so that is some of the purpose or the reason why I want to study statistics. And as I said, in summary, we can say that we study statistics because data is what's everywhere. And also statistical techniques are used to make what many decisions that affect our lives. No matter what your future line of work is, you will make decisions that involve the use of data. So this is what I was saying that no matter what your line of business is, you made decisions that involve what data. So let's take note of that. Let's take note of that. So let's move on to some statistical terms. I think we'll conclude around here once we are done. So the first article we are looking at is population. What is a population? So population, as it sounds, is simply 
a complete set of what data being what study. So if you are studying a particular what group of data that that comprise of all elements in, in it, then you are talking about population. Is that okay? You are talking about population. It involves everything or what we are, we have interest on. It's not part or I mean, it's not part that we are studying. You are studying a full set of what that particular data. Then you are talking about what population. So population is simply the complete set of data that has been what studied. So let's say they, taking the population of what, let's say Ghana, taking the population of let's say Ghana, then we are talking about what the whole what Ghana. We are not studying parts. Let's say taking the population about let's say US, then we are talking about what the population of what US. Is that okay? We are not studying parts. Is that okay? So most of the times in population, we are talking about what the whole set that we, are, we have interest in and that we want to what, study. Is that okay? So that is a population. So in other words, it is a collection of all possible individuals, objects, or measure of specific interest. So what we have interest, that's what we want to what, study. So we infer something about population. So remember that when it comes to studying of this population, it's, it's, not, it's impractical to study everything about population. So to make some form of inference to make some of what suggestion about the whole population then you want to take a representative what sample about the population that you can use to draw a conclusion about what the population based on let's say their characteristics based on let's say a particular feature they all have in common is that okay so that's why we're trying to say here that to make infer something about population we usually take a sample but here i call it a representative for sample because you can take any sample at all and, and that cannot be that cannot effectively make what or can that cannot be effectively infer something about what the population so here i call it a representative sample something that can make a better conclusion or draw better conclusion about what the population so that is the whole idea about population you are talking about what where we are studying a complete set of data that we have interest on then we are talking about population so population also give birth to what we call sample so sample here we are talking about what? a subset of population. So sample is actually part of population that we are studying to make what conclusion about the whole population under consideration and the interest that we are studying on. So it's a subset of population. In other words, it is a portion or part of population of interest that we can use to draw conclusion about the population in that case. So let's be guided about that. Sorry. So let's also move about, we also talk about I'll move on to talk about data set. What is a data set? We are saying that data set is a collection of data values forms, it's a collection of data values forms. So for example, each value in a data set is called what? A data value or what? a datum. That is a singular data. So data set, you are talking about a collection of data values. What we are collecting to actually make a decision. That's what we call data set. So let's say we are collecting data about students. We are collecting data about, let's say, a particular country you are collecting data about let's say the level of income of a particular uh, of let's say workers in a particular country or let's say the, the level of uh, spending about a particular jurisdiction or a particular let's say a particular uh, occupation is that okay so these are what we call the data so data we are talking about data so we are talking about what the collection of data values that we want to we are we are I mean, that we want to study in order to draw a conclusion. So we are saying that each value within a data set is called a data value or a datum. So that is each value. Each value in a data set is called what? That is a singular value of a data is called a datum or a data value. So let's be guided about this or let's take note of that. Then elements, elements, what are we talking about? The entities on which data are what collected. Element, the entities on which data are collected. Let's say, Gender. Gender can be an element. On gender, we can collect data about males and what females. That can be an element. Is that okay? So on gender, you can collect data about what males and what females. So that is an element. So element, you're talking about entities on which data are what collected. Then you're going to talk about observation. What is observation? Observation, the set of measurements obtained from a particular what element. So observation here, it comes in many forms. We can observe using our physical eye or you can observe using what instrument instrument let's say you want to uh, observe a particular rainfall in a particular area 
you want to use instrument to what do that so at the end of the day you put in i'll use this instrument day, to measure a particular rainfall within a particular what area so by that you are using instrument as a means of what observation if you are using your first sky to is by what site is that okay so observation here we are talking about a set of measurements obtained for particular what element so that's what we call observation sample survey here is also a survey to collect data on what a sample so it's a survey about what a sample that we have collected so sample survey here we are talking about what, a collection of what data about sample that we have i mean we have undertaken that's what we call what a sample survey that's what we call a sample survey please take note of these terms it's very important as we move along we make use of these some uh, terms as we move along they also talk about what sensors so as, as i think i mentioned this earlier on the sensor they're talking about counting of what a collection of data of an entire population we want to collect data about a particular population we do sensors in that case we want to count we want to count and collect the data about entire population or a particular area under consideration of interest they also have what we call random variables what is random variables variables whose values are determined by chance so per the name random so it come by what chance we determine those variables by what chance it doesn't occur by any by, by chance we can determine or let's say let's say want to we have let's say 10 group of people that you want to select let's say two of them we can say we can hastily select that let's say we select number nine we select number five by doing that we are picking them randomly that's what we call a random variable variable whose values are determined by what chance that's why we call a random what variable so let's take note of that then also so these are and these are the statistical terms that we are, we want to understand so far as statistics is concerned we have other terms but then for the purpose of this discussion we are just looking at these terms that you we need to know right so let's move on to types of statistics what are the types of statistics sorry that we have what are the types of statistics that we have so basically we have two forms of statistics we have what we call discrete statistics and inferential statistics or inference statistics what is a discrete statistic so discrete statistics per the name we are trying to describe and compare what set of data we are trying to describe and compare set of data. so these are the key things when it comes to discrete for statistics we try to compare and describe data or this we want to compare and dis describe data we describe and compare or compare and what describe whatever form you want to use is or whatever for definition you want to go with the way can be used interchangeably so here we describe and what compare data so let's take note of that and then also when it comes to inferential statistics we actually draw conclusion based on a representative sample from the population under consideration or under study so that's inferential inference you want to draw conclusion based on a representative sample from a particular population that you are studying so that's what we call it an inferential statistics. so these are the two forms of statistics that we have we have discrete statistics and inferential statistics i don't think you forget this when you're asked that what are the types of statistics we have discrete statistics and inferential statistics so let's take note of that so when it comes to descriptive statistics it is concerned with description presentation and summarization of a set of data in an informative way so the key idea is that it describes present and summarize a set of data in an informative way so that's what we call a descriptive for statistics when it comes to inferential as i already said you can also call it an inductive statistics it's concerned with drawing conclusions as i said regarding a population of interest on the basis of small parts of that information as i call it a representative for sample so here you are drawing conclusion on a population that you are studying based on a small part or a representative part of that particular population or that particular information that you want to study or that particular population so that's what we call what an inferential study you can also call it an inductive statistics here you make conclusion based on a representative sample from the population and that consideration so i hope that is clear so let's take notes of that then we can also talk about what variables we can also talk about what variables we can also talk about variables what is a variable so under variable we are saying a variable is actually it can be value like let's say x y z can be a whatever so a variable by its nature you are saying that 
takes a value that can be determined or that can assume a prescribed form of what number so per the name it changes it changes that's what we call a variable it is not constant but then if you have a value that is constant then we call that number as what a constant value so those ones can assume one set of what data or particular or can assume a single set of what data we call it what a constant what value but the one that can, can that can assume a prescribed that can assume a different form of numbers we call it what a variable any number that can assume a prescribed set of data or different set of data we call it what a variable but the one that can assume a single set of data we call it what a constant value so that's a variable so in a variable too you can talk about two forms you have what we call qualitative variable and quantitative variable when you're talking about qualitative variable we are talking about what variables that are non-numerical that does not involve what numbers that, is, that does not involve what numbers that's what we call what a qualitative what variable but then quantitative variable means it's a variable that involves what numerical what data that involve numerical data in that case so let's take note of that so as i said a variable is a character or attribute that can assume any prescribed set of what values called the domain of what the variable if so we are saying that if a variable can assume only one value as i already said it is known as what a constant for example pi pi we know pi we know pi is in a form of sorry when you have pi let's say theta so that's pi sorry pi rather i'm talking about it is what 22 out of what seven is that okay so here it won't change so this form of variable that can assume only one value is called a constant so here it just assume one what value we call it what a constant what value or a constant variable for purpose of understanding so variable as i said can be x y h or any anything at all can I assume different set of what values we call it what a variable please i'm coming since my battery i'm coming All right, so let's continue. That was just by the way. I think my laptop was going off, so I need to plug in mine. Well, yeah. All right, so let's continue. As I was saying, that is what we call what, a constant variable. Just assume what only one value. For example, pi as I've already indicated, 22 over what, 7. So that's what we call a variable. So let's move on. Come in. So as I already indicated, when it comes to variables, you have two forms of variables. You have what we call qualitative variable and quantitative. And as I've already indicated, qualitative variable, we are talking about what non-numerical what values or non-numerical data. And quantitative, you are talking about numerical what data that involve numbers. Is that okay? So let's move on to the types as I've already indicated. So when it comes to the qualitative variables, I've already said, or attribute, we are talking about non-numerical what data non-numerical what data non-numerical data there are values that can be placed into distinctive categories according to some characteristics or attributes so for example if a subject are classified according to let's say gender male and female then the variable here the variable gender is what a quality is because it doesn't involve numbers so the gender here becomes what a qualitative what data becomes a qualitative data becomes a qualitative data they are numerical in nature and can be ordered or what ranked so this is the key thing that you need to know when it comes to qualitative data, we said it is a non-numerical what data or value right there are variables that can be placed into distinctive categories like gender we have males and what female that's one so here gender becomes a qualitative variable but when it comes to quantitative variable is a is numerical in nature and then also can be ordered or what rank. Let's say let's take age. 
for, for instance, taking the age of what people, for instance, you can see that age, we can rank the age of what a group of people, right? So age becomes what a quali quantitative what variable or quantitative what data in that case. So let's take note of that. And when it comes to the quantitative variable, too, we have two forms. We have what we call discrete and continuous what variable. We have discrete and continuous variable. When it comes to quantitative variable, we have discrete and continuous. Discrete variable, here we are talking about data that we can assign or, or we, we assign numbers. I mean, here when it comes to discrete variable, we are talking about assignment of what numbers. And these numbers can be counted. So when it comes to discrete, we are talking about assignment of numbers, and these numbers can be counted. We are talking about counting numbers. Discrete data, we are talking about counting numbers. Let's say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is what we call a discrete word data. But when it comes to a continuous data, we are talking about numbers that we can that can assume. I mean, continuous data, they are continuous variables, sorry, they are those word variables whose numbers can be assumed with, between particular words range. For example, temperature. When you take the temperature, we can we can we can say that. The numbers can be assumed between what two points, right? Let's say from a particular point to let's say a particular point. That's temperature. Let's let's say we can also talk about weight, weight of what, let's say a particular thing, or weight of let's say or the weighing item or weight. Let's put it in that way. We cannot assume that here the number or a particular point, we can assume that's where we can assume what the weight. Or let's say we're going to take a weighing scale. You can clearly see that we have what it starts from zero to a particular what number. When you weigh a particular thing, you can see that the numbers are within what a range from zero to the highest or that particular number that we let's say 50. So it, on that way, we can say that the, the weight scale starts from zero to what 50. So weight can also be what a continuous variable. So continuous variable, we're talking about variable that we can assume within. A particular what range you can assume within a particular what range, but discrete data you are talking about assignments of numbers which can be what counted. Is that okay? So let's take note of that. So another discrete variable, as I said, can be assigned values such as zero one, and they are said to be what countable. So example of discrete variables are numbers of children in a family, talking about numbers of students in a class, numbers of cars that can pass through a checkpoint, numbers of what me uh, church members. Right, you can talk about number of citizens within a particular country. So, this could you are talking about what assignment of values, and this as need to be what or this need to be accountable what values or variables. That's what we call discrete what data. When you talk about continuous, I've already indicated can assume all values between two specific values or two specific what range. Temperature, for example, is a continuous variable since variable can assume. Of variable can assume all values between what any two given temperatures. On other examples, you can also talk about the weight of individuals, the length of item being measured. But when you take your ruler that you use, you can clearly see that the numbers ranges from zero to a particular what, 80 or 15. We call such uh, data as what a continuous what variables in that case. So let's take note that. Let's take note. So that's very important. It's very important. So actually, we'll end here for today's discussion. And we will continue tomorrow. So if you have any questions, you can drop it in the comment section. So tomorrow we'll look at levels of what measurement when it comes to what data. We we'll look at them and then I think we'll, we'll be done with the introductory part of statistics. And we'll continue with other issues. So if you have any questions, you can drop it in the comment section now. I already take up questions so that we will end today's discussion and continue tomorrow. Same time, 11. 11. So if you have any questions, you can.
So please, if you have any question, you can drop it in the comment section and then so we attend to it in that case. Any questions so far? All right, so if you don't have any questions, then thank you for joining today's session. Always a pleasure coming away to provide you some level of assistance to help you to understand various causes that we discuss on this channel. So please make sure to like this video before you leave so, so that others can also get a benefit to always join us so that we all learn together in that case. So catch you up tomorrow, same time, 11 a.m. so that we continue from the levels of measurements and then we'll end the introductory part and then we'll continue with other issues so far as, as a call that we have started. So please try to share this video out and then tell others that we have started a new course so that they can also join in like those who may be interested in this kind of videos so that we can also all learn together on this channel so please like and share this video before you leave so thank you and i'll see you in the next section bye bye